He's the poster boy of India's motorcycle industry. A risk taker who, despite criticism, chartered a new strategy to turn around the fortunes of his family business. And along the way, he transformed a homegrown company into a leading international brand. And now, he's granted us unprecedented access to learn what's his secret behind running a successful business empire. Meet Rajiv Bajaj, one of India's game changers. We are an anti-car company. We think the world will be a better place if the world is free of cars. He has disrupted India's vehicle industry once before and isn't afraid to do it again. It is always better to disrupt yourself than have somebody else disrupt you. And he's an avid follower of an ancient Indian practice. Yoga teaches us to cure what cannot be endured and to endure what cannot be cured. And I think it's the same in business. No matter where you go in India, the streets are full of motorcycles and scooters. With 17.5 million two-wheelers sold last year, India has become the largest market for these vehicles. For seven decades, one company has been synonymous with India's two-wheeler market, Pune-based Bajaj Auto. The, strategy of attack or the man at the helm of the company today is Rajiv Bajaj, the third generation to run the family business. The simplest way to describe it would be to say a Tesla on two wheels. He's talking about his next big project, a high-end electric motorcycle which he plans to launch by 2020. It must be sold not as an environmental solution because people don't find uh, it charming to buy batteries. It must be sold as a really chic and sexy product that you must have, that is irresistible. That sketch is there. Of the, the, the next one, like, As with all know, the company's the products, product, Rajiv is hands-on. Uh, involved in every aspect from design to manufacturing to marketing. There he takes inspiration from Silicon Valley. Everybody's motorcycle is like everybody else's motorcycle. The products that succeed or fail in the marketplace do not do so on performance anymore, not on quality or cost. What builds success is not the product but the brand. It's not the performance but the perception. Products are built in the factory. Brands are built in the mind. The reason Apple is a brand is because there is a story. We love hearing the story of Apple and Steve Jobs. Good, bad or ugly, Elon Musk is a story. It's an awesome story. And we want to build not just the electric vehicle as a product. We want to build it as a brand. As the eldest of the three siblings, he was considered the heir apparent. But Rajiv himself wasn't so sure. What did you think of the company as a kid when you were growing up, when you were still not involved in the business? I was never so charmed by it or never so interested in it. The only thing I remember is uh, running up and down uh, to my father's office in my shorts as a child. Uh, and the only reason I did that was because uh, in office my father used to smoke. And I used to love the smell of that. So I used to run up to his office to smell the smoke and then I used to run back home. At what point did you realize, I have to enter this business? So you started preparing for that? I was far clearer about what I didn't want to do than I was about what I wanted to do. Uh, I didn't want to study uh, commerce or accounts or management or anything like that because I thought that was terribly boring. Uh, I thought I was too sensitive to be a doctor because I could not bear the thought of cutting something open. So I studied engineering. I think. Uh, it was more from a process of elimination than any vision or any inspiration. We assembled scooters here. This was Rajiv took us to the factory where he started as a young engineer in the 1990s when he joined the family business. So we would come here with our bicycles or motorcycles uh, and weave uh, around the assembly line. So it was a bit of work and a bit of play as well. The signs of his unconventional ways were already apparent. So at that time, it was very, very surprising for the workmen to see this kind of an approach that uh, the son of the chairman of the company is coming to the shop floor and he wants to understand what difficulty I'm having in doing my job. The ability to connect with people at every level comes from the relatively normal childhood he and his siblings enjoyed. Bajaj Auto built residential colonies next to their factories. So a young Rajiv went to school and played with the children of factory workers and engineers. We had over 200 friends who were 
the kids of workers or watchmen or engineers or supervisors. Uh, we met with and played with them every day. And I think that is the reason why all of us were very grounded. By the time Rajiv joined the family business, the company was primarily making this scooter, the Chetak. It was a status symbol for India's middle class. And up until the 1980s, there was a 10-year waiting period to get one. It also made Bajaj Auto a household name. Chetak itself was launched, I believe, in the early 70s. And it... But by the mid-90s, the scooter business was in trouble. Competition was hurting Bajaj's star product. A partnership with Japan's Kawasaki to manufacture motorcycles in India was also struggling. Rajiv decided that Bajaj should go it alone and design their own motorbikes. This is the motorcycle that changed the identity of this company, I would say. Bajaj produced its first in-house motorcycle, the Pulsar, in 2001. It became an instant hit. Rajiv says the Pulsar was all about being macho, powerful and high-tech. And this was your first product where it was your design, your technology, your product, everything. Yes, this is the first time that Bajaj Auto created its own brand or product mm -hmm. uh, and definitely so in a successful manner. The reason it succeeded is not because it was like other motorcycles in the marketplace. It was because it was unlike anything the market had seen. Rajiv chose a group of young, untested engineers to design and create the motorcycle. The success of the project taught him a valuable lesson. It was also therefore a lesson in people for me, that in the future, whenever I would approach a challenge in Bajaj, I never felt the need to look for grey hair. You know, I was very comfortable and I'm still very comfortable working with people in their 20s and 30s. With the success of Pulsar, the company's motorcycle business took off. Rajiv was convinced that the company needed to continue on the new path going ahead. One of his first moves after taking over the reins from his father was a controversial one. Overnight, when my father was away, we shut the plant down and then we asked for his forgiveness afterwards and that was the end of this shop floor. It was unheard of that a company of the prominence of Bajaj I mean, to shut down a plant, it was seen as a loss of face in those times, rather than being seen as a something you are doing for the future. The decision to shut down the scooter business and focus on motorcycles was met with severe criticism, including from his own father. But Rajiv saw the shift as part of grander ambitions. It was not that we, uh, we chose motorcycles over scooters. The choice we made was to be a global company and not to be a domestic company. But it was a very controversial decision at that point of time. It still is. Do you remember the conversation, the first time you had that conversation with your father when you told him, I think we need to... Oh yeah, I, I would often sit with my father and tell him, here are 30 examples uh, that support my point of view. Uh, can you give me one uh, that doesn't? The example that would keep coming back to me would be of a Honda or a Yamaha saying, look at them, you know, they make scooters, they make motorcycles, they make cars, and they do all of this uh, quite well across the world. The only weak refrain coming from people would sometimes be of General Electric. Where is GE today? Where is General Motors today? I think the problem is not with the electric or the motors, the problem is with the word general. Nobody goes to a general physician anymore. Nobody goes to general motors anymore. Nobody goes to general electric anymore. So I think specialization wins. But your father didn't agree with you. I think uh, uh, my father perhaps came from, if I may say so, the era of generalization. Uh, I think I was born into the age of specialization. Um, and that brought about its conflict. What I give my father credit for is simply this, that although he questioned it vigorously many times and he I think he's still not convinced uh, about our chosen path. Uh, but in the end, he has allowed us to do what we thought best. Despite all the criticism, you have stuck on to the theory of specialization. Are you a rebel? No, I think I'm the biggest coward uh, there is because I fear failure. I fear being wrong. I have a wonderful team. I fear letting them down. One of the ways Rajiv has been able to handle the intense pressure of the top job and the criticism that goes along with it is yoga. Rajiv spends his evenings practicing the discipline which combines balance, strength and flexibility. 
He describes the ancient Indian practice as his passion, giving him clarity in tough situations. Yoga has also inspired his business philosophy. Yoga teaches us to cure what cannot be endured and to endure what cannot be cured. And I think it's the same in business. You must have a positive attitude. Uh, you can't will, uh, win every battle you fight. So what you can cure, you cure and the rest you endure. How does yoga inspire your management mantra? With yoga, it is very important to focus on the position that you are on, on the mat and ask yourself, are you at ease in this position? Have you found your center in this position? I think it's the same with brands. Uh, you are always trying to ask yourself if your brand is at ease in the marketplace, i.e. is it growing, is it growing profitably? Uh, or do you need to adjust it one way or the other? That constant self-evaluation and micro-adjustments have helped Bajaj bikes accelerate in overseas markets. Over the last decade, Rajiv has driven Bajaj Auto beyond the shores of India. 40% of the company's overall revenues come from exports. This year, Rajiv expects to sell 2 million vehicles across 70 countries around the world. We see it. Africa has been one of their success stories. To compete with the established players, Bajaj sold their motorcycles at a loss to gain market share. Today, Rajiv says, one out of every three motorcycles sold in the continent is a Bajaj and he's setting his sights on the other big markets in the developing world. Rajiv has plans to introduce Bajaj motorcycles in Indonesia and Brazil. So how do you plan to expand? Today, we have about 20% uh, market share in, uh, in all the markets that we compete in. Bajaj is the only two-wheeler company in the world that is competitive, i.e. it is relevant and viable as a competitor in all markets across the spectrum from Africa to Europe. See, when, when we go to Africa, we encounter largely Chinese competition. Whereas when you go to Europe, we see the American and European brands, but you see Bajaj everywhere. Uh, so we say to ourselves very proudly, the sun never sets on a Bajaj motorcycle across the world. The company also owns a large stake in Europe's largest high-end motorcycle company, KTM. It also manufactures KTM motorcycles at its factory in Pune and exports them to several countries. It ties in with Rajiv's strategy of selling motorcycles across a range of prices, from the more expensive KTMs to the company's own mid-price Bajaj brand. While Rajiv is credited with expanding Bajaj Auto, he reveals his desire to turn the company into an international brand came from a source a little closer to home. This actually owes itself to my father because one day I went and asked him, what is it you really want me to do here? And he showed me a quote of my grandfather's because my grandfather started this company. And my grandfather said to my father, do what you think best, but be the best in what you do. And I asked him, but what does it mean to be the best? I mean, how do you know you are the best? And he said, well, I think if you're global, you can assume you're the best or you're one of the best because only the best can be global, uh, you know. And I said to myself, okay, then maybe this is what uh, the old man expects of me, that we must be a global company. Apart from motorcycles, Bajaj is also the world's largest producer of auto rickshaws, the three-wheel taxis used by millions in India. But having disrupted his company once before, he now plans to do it again with a greener and more fuel-efficient four-wheel vehicle called the Quadricycle. Bajaj has been exporting them for the past few years and recently got permission to sell them in India. We are an anti-car company. We think the world will be a better place if the world is free of cars because we think for most travel, cars are too big, too heavy, too fast, consume too much fuel and emit too much pollution. You're the largest three-wheeler maker in the world. Mm, yeah. How difficult is going to be the process of replacing those with this contrast? Of course, uh, there is an inherent conflict there because as the world's largest three-wheeler maker, uh, we are not about to say that the three-wheeler is no good. Uh, we will always aver that the three-wheeler is God's gift to mankind. Uh, but here is something better. Uh, and the closest analogy uh, that makes sense to us is that of Gillette. Uh, yeah, three blades is good, but four is better. And in any case, uh, it is always better to disrupt yourself than have somebody else disrupt you. 
The journey is far from over for Rajiv as he looks to reinvent Bajaj Auto once again.